Today's video, we are going to tie some little ant patterns out of craft foam. I am tying a few flies um, that are really simple with very local source materials for the next couple videos. I've got some buddies who are following along and they want to be able to get started and they are waiting for some materials to come in. So we're going to tie with what we've got right now. So I'm kind of showing them some patterns that we can do that. So what I'm starting with is a size 12 Mustad dry fly hook. You can use 10s, 12s, whatever size you want. Um, ants, you know, they, they, they're pretty well different, but I like 10s and 12s for the most part. So the next thing we are going to use, we'll have some black thread, 210 denier, which is a little bit thicker than normal. I'm going to use a little bitty piece of yellow craft foam as an indicator and a little bit of black foam to make the body of the ant. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors. We're going to cut about a quarter inch wide. By like three inches long. Once we get that cut, we are going to take our thread. The other thing we'll be using is some black dubbing. And this is an acrylic black dubbing. Actually made from some yarn, so pretty pretty local source there too. What we're going to do, we're going to tie our thread in at the middle of the hook. Once we get our thread tied in, I'm going to bring my thread uh, through my scissors. Kind of get rid of the shiny of the hook. I want to have a real good base all the way around the back of that hook. I'm going to go back to the front of the hook and do the same thing and then bring my thread dead center again. Once I get my thread dead center, I'm going to take my piece of black foam and I'm going to tie it in at the dead center. Now I want this tied in really tight which will affect the buoyancy of the bottom part, but the top part of the fly will have enough buoyancy to keep it going. Now I'm going to bring this thread all the way to the curve of the back of the hook. I'm not going to get on the back of the hook, but I'm going to take it right to it. I'm going to tie that down pretty tight. Once I get that tied down pretty tight, I'm going to take some dubbing wax. The acrylic dubbing that I make is a lot thinner than it ought to be um, which I like for real small patterns but it, it it does better with some wax to get it on so we're going to spin our, our dubbing on now when you spin your dubbing you don't want a whole bunch of dubbing you want to have smaller diameter and if you need it thicker make more wraps that makes the the strength of your fly so much better and it also makes them better looking which is good practice to get into for regular flies, not just these simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that dubbing and we're going to make basically the back half of our body. Once I get that dubbing wrapped, I'm going to bring my thread back dead center. I'm going to fold this body over. I'm going to make a loose wrap. Now you see how I've got the back end of that kind of protruding out where it sticks up like a, a body would. Then I'm going to tighten that down. Once I've got that part tightened down, I'm going to bring my thread forward to the eye of the hook. Now you want to be able to leave that eye to where you can get to it. And a lot of guys, that's where they screw up when they fly or tie flies, is they'll end up overcrowding that and it just makes it hard to fish and it doesn't look good either. So you want to make sure and leave that to where you have when you fold your piece up that you can see the eye real good. Once you get this done, we're going to hold our fly in place so the foam doesn't wrap all over. We're going to tie that foam down pretty good and we're going to repeat, repeat the process and dub the front half of the fly. And this is a very good pattern that you can do in several different colors, um, depending what you're fishing for. But there's, you know, beetles and bugs and different floating insects that this kind of can represent so you can play around with it with different colors you can add legs to the sides you can you know we we can adjust this thing in several different ways so get the dubbing on just as i did before and once i get that dubbing all tied in i'm going to bring my thread back to the center I'm going to tie that body down loose. And once I get it down, I'm going to tie it tight. 
Now you want to get your scissors in there pretty snug and get that, that center piece tied off. Once you get that done, you take your little piece of foam that you're going to use for an indicator and you're going to tie that in place. And once you get it tied in, you're going to take your scissors. You want to trim that thing kind of even, which doesn't mean anything. It's for you. It's not for the fish. That's basically just an indicator that you can see. So we're going to bring our thread into there and we're going to whip finish. Now there's guys who will tie rubber legs on the back of these things to the sides that you know hang out a little ways and I've never seen an ant with unproportionately long legs so I think that's kind of a waste of time if you want to have it to where it looks a little more realistic you can take your dubbing needle and just kind of poke some of these fibers out and for me that seems to do just as good of a job I always like to use head cement on my flies Basically, just cover up that thread, and there you have it. That is your craft foam ant. It is one of the easiest things you could learn to tie, and super easy to fish. It is a great pattern for for any place that you're going to have ants. Um, bluegill love it. Trout love it. Good flies. So, anyhow, appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you in the next video.